All right, all right, here we go. What's happening, beautiful people of the grounds? This is your friend Amundo, world's greatest living artist, Jose Trujillo. And uh, hell yeah, dude, we're right here. What's up? Say hi to me. Say hi to the world's greatest living artist. Oh my God, Jose, you are the world's greatest living artist. You're amazing. It's true, it's true, it's true, you guys. I am amazing, Mundo. What's up, everybody? What's happening? What's happening? Dude, I'm gonna make this thing happen so, so good. Look at that. Ooh la la. Je ne sais quoi comme si comme ça. Look at that. Look at that. There we go. Look at that. B E A beautiful. Okay, Jose, let's see what you got. I got something, all right. Let's see. Uh, I thought the canvas was a whip. What's a whip? W I P. I don't know what W I P is. What's a whip, you guys? Look at that. Look at that. Ooh la la. Come see, come sign. Je ne sais quoi. Look at that. Ooh, baby. Let's see. I thought your easel was a work in progress. Oh, I like that. That's a whip. Gotcha. 
I like that. Yeah, the easel, the easel is, is, uh, is, it's got all kinds of things in there. <laughs> Super weird. I like how people are like, dude, this is a, the easel alone is a work of art. I'm like, hell yeah. Dude, I went, I, I went, I went to get dinner last night and I saw one of my paintings, one of my art pieces, uh, right next to our table. I was like, what? I'm going to become famous, dude. I can feel it. It was a nice fancy Italian restaurant, and uh, it had one of my one of my paintings right there, one of the, one of the bigger ones. I was like, "Ooh la la, baby, je ne sais quoi, man! No way!" And then I kept walking, and then I found more, and I was like, "Ooh la la!" I didn't know. I don't know. I didn't know how famous I was. I have no idea about my 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 fame. Consider yourself waved at by the world's greatest living artist. Yeah, I, I had no idea. My my wife my wife tells me that that uh, she's seen my work all over town in uh, hotels and restaurants. I was like, well, I didn't know about that because I don't, well, I don't do that anymore, right? I don't go to hotels or restaurants or cafes and try to get them to exhibit my work. I, I just, I don't, I don't, I'm, 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 uh, I'm having, I'm enjoying privilege in a different way. I get to paint pretty much what I want, and, uh, and then people buy it, and then boom, you know. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh, baby. Du, 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 du. Every time I turn around. Every time I turn around. What's happening, people? Dude, it's dude. Dudes. Dude, say hi to the world's greatest living artist. I'm right here. Man, I have one of my homies from Canada sent me some paintings. I'm going to auction some of his work. Chris, man, I'm gonna auction some of Chris, some of Chris's work. We'll see how that goes. By the way, I don't know if I, I've, I've told you this, guys. I'm going to be uh, just a few works. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with just a handful of works. I'm going to start uh, auctioning on eBay uh, art pieces that that I that I believe are uh, are definitely worth auctioning. Sharing with my friends. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to be auctioning some pieces. Every time I turn around, every time I turn around. Yeah, I like what Ebeth does, right? I like what Ebeth does. Because it, 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 there's a probably a higher chance to auction something at Ebeth to get more on Ebeth. The problem is that uh, they won't auction all your pieces right away. It takes time. They'll do it in like two or three months or more. Um, the other thing is that they also take they, they take 50% of the sale. 
They will take 50% of the sale. That's another one. Um, what's another one? And I, I think 50% is fair. They, they take less when you sell it for like a thousand bucks and up. But if you're selling it for like, you know, a hundred bucks, three, four, five hundred bucks, they're gonna take 50%. Nothing wrong with that. I can't hate on a hustle. But um, what I'm offering is something different. What I'm offering to a handful of artists is uh, I'm going to be, uh, we can do it as, as many as, as many as, as it works, right? If it works, if, it's, if, if people do accept the work and they, and they you know, we, we can do as many as you want. If people accept your work and they want to bid on it. But I, again, I'm only going to do it with a handful of artists. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh la la. Look at those flowers. Come si, come sa. So that's what I'm up to lately. Let's see. Lots of work, lots of work. Dude, I was having like the best talk earlier, guys. It was like the coolest thing ever. I think I was in flow. I was talking about about all kinds of uh, uh, philosophical philosophical things. I was in it to win it. It was a good, it was a good talk. It was a good chat. Look at that glass. What were you discussing? I don't know. We got into like all kinds of esoteric things. The The main discussion was... Um, uh, I was pontificating about... <laughs> about painting with no mind. Painting without thinking. Which is... Uh, it's the ultimate way of creating artwork when you're not thinking. In my opinion. In my experience. It's not even an opinion. It's an experience. The ultimate way of creating artwork is without thinking. And uh, and I got into uh, uh, my spiritual journey as an artist, as a as a as a human being, and learning from 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 my upbringing. Right? I was I was raised Catholic. Uh, I was raised Catholic, and uh, I I no longer follow religions. I'm not interested in religions. But I do, uh, I do, uh, I do respect and I love their their teachings, and because I was I was raised Catholic, um, well, that's that's what I talk about, right? I talk about the things that that uh, helped me in my upbringing, things that helped me make sense of the world, 
and uh, and what I was taught about doing work, right? What I was taught about doing it's no different than 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 Buddhism and and any other any other religion. It's it's uh, at its core, it's the same. At its core, it's the same as all religions. It's about finding peace, ultimately. And so that's what I was going into. And, uh, man, once I started understanding how to paint without, without identification of, of the mind, it opened, up, it opened up a whole other world for me. I don't say that I, I live like this, no. But I do have these moments where, where it's, I can't even describe them. They're so beautiful when I'm creating artwork. This, this very deep, intense moments where I'm not invested intellectually, psychologically in my, in my work. And everything that I'm doing is just, it's just bliss. It's nothing but bliss. And so that's why I said that's the best way to create artwork. There you go, that's a quote. That's a beautiful quote. The ultimate way of creating art is without thinking. I'll set through here, yeah. What's happening? Let's see. Really good flow in the chat. Steady, mind blowing. Thank you so much. And so that that was the that was the that was the point of discussion, right? It's more like it's it's more of a it's, it's more of a monologue. It's more of a monologue. Although I try to make it into a dialogue. I, I want to get people participating, but it's ultimately more of a monologue. And, uh, and you know, I try to share, I try to share my experiences, guys. They may be worth something. They may be worth something. Maybe not. Maybe yes. Maybe it might help an artist or two around. One of the things that I learned over the years is that, is that, uh, and, and, and this happened to me early on in my career. Uh, I was very, uh, what's that word? I was very, uh, uh, when you think you know it all, what's that word? I forgot. But I used to think that I knew it all. And, and that hurt me a lot because it prevents you from growing. It prevents you from learning. When you're so fixed, when you're so fixed on knowing everything, you, uh, you stop growing. You stop learning. You, it's almost like you get into a time capsule, you know, you get into a time capsule and, uh, and then you can't move. I was, uh, I was arrogant. I was very arrogant. And I think it comes with youth. Arrogance comes with youth. Not always, but many times. And I had a very hard time the first few years of my career. And I had a very hard time getting to the path of my career because of that. Um, I look back now and I'm like, man. Let me paint another one, guys. Let me show you another one. What's happening? Art Hut 1. Art Hut 1. What is it? Svender King Tenberg. What's up? Nena FDZA, what's happening? Andrea, Andrea Odelap. And so gr growing up, those those part of my my the difficulty in my career was was finding that uh, finding out that between me and and learning what I needed to learn, uh, there was a lot of a lot of a lot of arrogance, right? A lot of arrogance. I, I knew everything about everything. 
No, I, I could not be taught anything. And uh, as you're growing up, life, those of you who are older, life humbles the shit out of you, you know? Life starts humbling you into submission. <laughs> life starts humbling you into submission. And, uh, and I've learned a lot. I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I'm a hard-headed person still. And, uh, you know, and there I am, trying to figure things out still. However, um, I try to do it with, a, with, a, with the spirit, of, with the spirit of, of humor, right? I try to put a little bit of humor in there. Because uh, because uh, if not, it's it's very painful. You know, it's very painful to be uh, so arrogant. And I I find a lot of artists out there that I see that are having a hard time. Many of them, I've noticed that they, 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 there's still that arrogance, um, that idea of I know what I'm doing, I know it all. It's a it's a it's a difficult it's a difficult lesson. It's a very difficult lesson. Let's see, Mark Mark Cook, fine arts a psychologist, mainly. Zig Zen, oh, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that, uh, wrote a book called Flow. It was about the nature of optimal experience and sounds. Sounds very much like what the, the state that you are referring to. Oh, I love that. I got to check that out. It's called Flow. I might have I might have listened to it already. It sounds like something I had already listened to on... on uh, on, I like to listen to audiobooks on Audible. Um, but yeah, that is, that is the ultimately that's what it is. It's it's a state of flow. It's a state where there is no mind, where you, where the dancer becomes the dance, and the dance becomes the dancer, and there's a union, right? It's ultimately what it means is that the, you enter a state of non-duality. It's a state of non-duality, but but even that sounds very philosophical. Um, but that that's what it's referred to as a state of non-duality, where there's a there's a union, uh, where the two become one. Right. Some of my favorite passages were where uh, when I was growing up, uh, I liked to read about um, Dead Sea Scroll books and and books that didn't quite fit into the Bible. But, but where from that um, time period and, and originally were supposed to be there, but because of the you know council of um, which one was it? Was it Nicaea? I don't remember which council it was. It wasn't. It wasn't introduced into the Bible. But anyways, this was the Gospel of uh, the Gospel of Thomas, one of my favorite books uh, of the Christian, the Judeo Christian Bible, where it says. Uh, where it says that until two become one, right? Uh, Jesus talked about that, until two become one. It's the state of non-duality. Another, another thing that it was mentioned is that a great wedding, right? A great union. And ultimately that's the state of flow. There's no separation. The, the, the art and the artist become one. And that's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. It's the, it's the optimal place to create artwork. Let me, let me get this closer to you. What's happening? Art's back. Is that it? Is that it? Art's back. Uh, Mekina Becky Drake. What's happening? Yeah, pretty much that. And so that was the dialogue earlier. I, I, I really, 
I really enjoy uh, having uh, um, those dialogues because they, they remind me also of, of what I need to do and, and what I need to focus on. Oftentimes we focus on a lot of negativity in our days, you know, lots of negativity, lots of negative stuff. And uh, it's no bueno, no bueno. Not good for the soul to focus on so much negativity. And I think as an artist, I, I try to look for that. You know, I try to look for the positive aspect of things. The, 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 not just half empty, half full, which is, which is beautiful, you know, uh, to look at things half full, but also just to look at things as they are, even if it's empty, right? Even if it's, if it's empty, it's fine. If it's full, it's fine too. And just look at it as, it as it is. Without taking away or adding to it. Right. Don't take away or add to it. Look at it with brutal honesty. And, 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 and allow it to be. Allow it. Whatever that is. Put a little bit of light right here, and so that's that's what I like uh, about my day. Ultimately, about being an artist, is that I get to dictate those things in my own in my own little head, right? I get to dictate those things, or in my own little experience, my little my little mac, mi micro experience here. Um, I get to I get to have some of that. Makes me very happy. Look at this. Ultimately, I think that's the most uh, liberating thing to be able to to enjoy your uh, your day. Be enjoyed in your day. Have some joy in there. Whatever that is, whatever life throws at you. I know that. Some days are harder than others. Some moments are harder. Um, as I was saying earlier, the reason why they're so hard sometimes is because it's because um, we've allowed time to get into our minds. The, the psychological aspect of life, the psychological aspect of life is time. And it's uh, it comes from a it's rooted in not being enough or not having enough. That's where it's rooted. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not handsome enough. I'm not rich enough. I don't have enough time. Not enough. My work is not good enough. You don't love me enough. I don't love them enough. You know? It's, it's rooted in not enough. Which is the fundamental problem. It's a fundamental problem. It's a challenge because it's because it's psychological. It's not real. It's not. It's not reality. Thank you so much. That red is beautiful, right? I really dig that red. I think it it does something. My wife is telling me to read a, a new, uh, this new book, or not new book, new, uh, um, uh, 
podcast, I think, from... I think it's Marissa Peer, I want to say. Or no, it's not Marissa Peer, it's someone else. I don't know which one it is. Uh, it's the person, that, the, the lady who wrote... I think it's the lady who wrote... Uh, or writes about vulnerability. She, she, she explained some really cool things. Um, and, or explained things in a very uh, cool way. Yeah, the pursuit of enoughness. That's the thing. Never feel enough. Never feel enough. It's the root of all the psychological dilemma. I'm never enough. Did I say the right thing? Did I act the right way? Did I offend them? Is it good? Is it? Please tell me. Please tell me that it's going to be okay. Right? It's that it's that that pursuit that never ends. Artists have that a lot because we are we, we love showing and we love we love it when people love our work. And so you show your work and you know, it's like a little child. What do you think, mommy? What do you think? Is it can we put it on the fridge? Is this worthy of being put on the fridge? Then, uh, and then that dictates wrongfully uh, for a child is fine but an adult it dictates you become a you become people's prisoners right you become the prisoner of, of people of what they what they think how they feel about you and on and on and on you become the prisoner it's problematic but it's but it, but it's no one's fault no one's at fault there is no fault it's it's, uh, it's human conditioning. It's not a fault thing. It's human conditioning. The condition for millennia. Um, to uh, to try to feel enough. You know, we're in condition for a long, long time. To have naysayers, to to have yaysayers, yes and no, and and on and on and on. How's it going, Sophie? Good to see you, Scott, Jelena, artist man, Scott. What's happening? And so yeah, it ultimately turns into that. It turns into a pursuit of not enoughness, of enoughness. <laughs> Not a pursuit of not enough, but a pursuit of enoughness. When will I ever be enough, have enough, be loved enough, love enough? It's a bottom. It's a bottomless pit. It's a bottomless pit. It cannot be pursued. When will my artwork be any good? When will I sell? When will I sell enough? When will I sell at high enough prices? When will I? And by the way, when something seems to, when something seems to fix on one level, it seems to fall on another level, right? So, so such is the world. Many of us, most of us, don't have wisdom until we're older, until we're most of us until we're old. And 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 that wisdom would have come in handy in our twenties, huh? <laughs> but that is uh, that is the world such is life and uh, so yeah I, I, I touch on a couple of different things I, I think it all it's all 
it all uh, it's all it's all intertwined with with artwork. All of it, in one way or another, ends up being a, a form of art. In one way or another, no matter where you put it, it ends up being a form of art. Okay, let's do another painting. I would recommend Secu Seculosity by David Zoll. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna screen grab that. I'll take your word for it. Secula secu seculosity. I like that. All right, let me get let me get another canvas and let's put another canvas there. Let's make this thing. Let's make this thing work, you guys. Uno más. Uno más. Uno más, Jose. Uno más. Oh, no mas. Oh, no mas. Hold on. Boom. There we go. Yeah, there's this uh, necessity to... to... The human being is an interesting... It's an interesting thing, man. The human, I, I feel like the human being is such an interesting... Uh, organism the, our, our minds uh, are such a beautiful gift but uh, at the same time if, if unchecked I'm going to take my lunch break okay. yeah. at the same time it's uh, if, 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 if our minds are unchecked they become a burden which which has proven to be a, a burden, right? I mean, look at look at um, look at the twentieth century, all the oh, wars. The bottom. Just the bottom one said, "Thank you." Look at the look at the wars. Look the wars that that we've that we've had. All twentieth century has been nothing but. I mean, all centuries, right? But the twentieth century has been the bloodiest. It's almost like a necessity for human beings to uh, to fuck each other up. <laughs> it's almost a necessity. It's like it's like things are kind of good. Why don't we ruin this? And uh, again, right? There's no. We can't go and blame anybody. There's no. Even the even the perpetrator, the perpetrators. The, the, they can't. You can't blame whether whether. Uh, I don't know the the, the the heroes and the villains. We cannot really blame. At one level, we can, but ultimately, at a macro, we can't. It's it's all part of the same thing. It's a it's a collective. At one level, we can. We have courts and justice system and and this and that and. We help people. We hold people accountable, um, and it's good. It's good at, at that level, but on a macro level, it, it's it's not. It just isn't. It it isn't because it's human conditioning. Nothing can fix it. Not at that level. Not by holding someone accountable. Because it's lack of awareness. lack of awareness yeah. so what am I saying with this um, the, the the pursuit that we have of not being complete and trying to complete ourselves is a uh, is a false one it's a false pursuit because it because the the incomplete part of you only exists in your mind it does not exist in reality part of the mind it's a trick in the mind it's you're being deceived by your own mind that you're not complete that you're not whole 
somehow you need to redeem yourself some somewhere along the way which of course it's nothing but it's nothing but bullshit it's not true you don't need redemption you don't need to yes you can get better at things you can at one level but in, in the macro that you don't need anything you are complete you're full Your 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 cup is empty. Your cup is empty. I mean, your your cup is full. It's not empty. You don't need anything. And uh, but of course, the mind doesn't believe that. The mind doesn't believe that. Why? What is this? Why am I talking about this? What, what does this have to do with being an artist or artwork? Well, because for the longest time, we'll, we're approaching our artwork from a point of not being good enough. And, and it's not true. We approach our artwork and our art from a position of uh, lack. Either I'm not good enough, or I don't have enough time, or, or I'm not selling, or it is some sort of not complete. And of course, that's not it's not true. I'm not original enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. I get I get uh, I don't get the exhibits that I deserve. I don't get the respect that I deserve from the marketplace. I don't. Uh, you know, on and on and on and on, and of course, none of, none of that is true. It's 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 a mental thing. It's a mental, it's a mental story. It's a story that that we tell ourselves, and we and we perpetuate it by retelling the story to others and to ourselves and to others, and we keep re perpetuating it. It's not true. Of course, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not pulling this from from my, my sleeve or or from my rear. This is something that has been said for for millennia. Shakespeare said it really well. You know, there's no such thing as good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Right? It's the story that you tell yourself that dictates the ideas of a good day, a bad day, a good painting, a bad painting. It's, it's rooted in story only. It's not. It's not reality. And so our artists sometimes reach out to me, send DM me, and say something like, "You know, how do you keep inspired, or this or that, or and because because we think it's a story, or we think it's a hack." But it's not. The only way to stay inspired is to keep moving. But you have to move a lot because it, it's not a mental. It's not a mental thing. It's a physical thing. Inspiration is physical. It's not mental. But see, but we don't share these things. As art is not, almost nobody sharing these things, that inspiration is not mental, it's physical. But the more you paint, the more inspired you will become. But you really have to go and paint. You can't, can't play with it. You really have to go and paint. And you're going to paint till your back hurts or your arm hurts. And you're going to paint and paint and paint and paint. And all of a sudden, boom, inspiration gets triggered. The inspiration is, is physical. Um... That's why Picasso said, I believe in inspiration, but it has to find you working, right? He understood that it was physical. I'm not saying this because I heard it from Picasso. I'm saying this because I learned this in my own studio. I, I, I came to terms with this through years of practice and being a full-time artist. I started understanding that inspiration is physical.
But yes, you can practice some of that visualization thing, and of course. But ultimately, ultimately, it is physical. You have to get up and do it. And as you're doing it, the, 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 way, the, the way is... What do they say? The, the way is the way. Right? The way is the walking. What makes the path is the walking. It's not the. It's not that you're gonna find the way. It's it's the walking makes the way. Makes the path. And that's where people come up with ideas like, you gotta trust yourself. You gotta trust in the process. You gotta trust the muse, and on and on and on and on. And of course, of course you gotta. But but why do people say that? Where does that come from? It comes from someone who started walking first. Who put the horse before the cart, right? Before the wagon. Someone started walking and then realized, oh my God, as I'm walking, I'm, look, I'm finding the way. But you cannot find the way by sitting there. Your way, right? Whatever that way is. Soy Paula de Madrid. Un fuerte abrazo hasta Madrid. And and that's what makes the that's what makes this game so so fun. That's what makes it so damn fun. That um you find your your uh, you find your way through through movement. find your way through movement. Siempre me fascinan tus colores. Muchísimas gracias. Hold on, don't open it. Oh yeah, what what name does it say? Chris Diskin. Oh yeah, that's my homie from from Canada. What is it? He sent me some paintings. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. We'll get it in. Thank you. We will. We we'll start putting. We we'll start. We we'll start putting what one, and then we'll see it and and see how people react. Okay. Well, it was beautifully packaged. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a video and open it for him. Okay. Chris, got your package. It's here. It's here, Chris. Thank you so much. How was it, Mija? Um, good. Yeah. Long drive, traffic's bad. Yeah. Where's Danielito? He's laying down. He wanted to go back to sleep. Yeah. I bet he was tired, huh? Mm -hmm. I remember when school used to make me tired, man. I, just, I used to come home and like wanted to go and like, lay down. My sisters used to sleep after school. I always used to take a nap after school. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I always fought naps. I still do, I think. So I would, I would just go and do something else. And... Maybe. 
Marcel will be back. Marcel went and took their lunch. Yeah, they said that they're stuck in traffic, but they're trying to make it back faster. I told them just to be safe. They're stuck in traffic? They just left. I know, but they're on their way out. There's like a bunch oh, of Oh, on their way there. out. I thought on their way back. I was like, no. what? They just left. How are they, way? How are they back? Tienes hijos? Sí, tengo uno. Nervous, hope you love them. Be they're wonderfully packaged. They said says that they're wonderfully packaged, so. I am so impressed. All we got to do now is 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 uh hope that uh the people on on eBay embrace them. So, as I mentioned to you, uh Chris, I'm going to do one at a time. And then I'm going to show you the results. And then you let me know if you want to keep going. You know, based on the results, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to play by ear. That way I don't, that way I don't throw all of them out there. And then, and then uh, you know, I think, it's, I think it's safer to throw one at a time. You know, we could go bananas and just throw them all in there, but I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> I do that with my work, but I'm, I'm not willing to do it with someone else's work. Um, to, to do the, the whole bananas thing. And I do that with my own work because I, I've seen my work. I've, I've I've seen my work go for very little on on at auction, and 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 I've seen it go for for a, a high prices, and so so I just learned how to just throw it in there. But uh, but that's not it's not easy to do uh, emotionally, right? I'm hungry. I haven't eaten, so I'm gonna eat. Okay, baby. I already ate one of the meals. Ooh la la, je ne sais quoi. You know best, lol. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna make a video. I'm gonna make a video on um, packaging it so that way you can check it out. Yeah, Lizette almost opened it. She was like, I'm going to open this right now. I was like, hold on. Let me let me see who is, whose is it from. Yeah, guys, by the way, I'm going to be, uh, again, I'm going to be auctioning some work from from a, a handful of artists on eBay. Um, and uh, in hopes that uh, some of the people that buy my work are interested in their work as well. You know? Look at that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, my friends, well, I'm going to stop this video right here because um, I'm going to grab some water. I'm going to kick it for a little bit. And uh, and I'll be back. I'll be back. Look at those lemons. I'll be back and, and, uh, and record some more. Do some more lives. Okay? Stay tuned because the world's greatest living artist is here to stay, baby. Peace out.